Hey crafty friends, Christina here with you from Sunny Day Memories. So for the month of October, we are going to be featuring a new paper collection that is shown in the new scrapbooking brochure that came out last month. So if you haven't been able to see this, I do have a separate video that does do a walkthrough of the items that are in here. But for the purposes of this month, I did wanna show you, we are going to be doing the Halloween Spells paper collection. Since um, Halloween happens in October, we thought it would be fun to show you these papers that work for both Halloween projects as well as some general projects. So the next page in this brochure shows you the patterns of the paper that come in this collection, but I'm gonna actually show them for you here so you'll get a better look at them. So they are slightly different than our standard designer series papers in that you get the same number of papers in it, but you're getting more of each pattern. So it's less patterns, um, but more of those patterns. So that way, if you like to do some bulk creating, maybe you wanna make some bulk Halloween cards, this is gonna be a great set for you to get. So as you can see on the one side, here are the four patterns that you'll get from this. And then on the back side, you've got these patterns with these nice colors. And so you'll get three sheets of each of these in this paper collection. And you can choose to get it just the paper, or you can choose to get it with the sticker sheet included. This week we are going to be creating a non-spooky card using the stripe paper that's from that Halloween Spells paper. So um, it makes for a really classic, pretty, simple look. It's a simple gatefold here. So let's go ahead and get started. So the base of it um, is going to be with a eight and a half inch by five and a half. And then we're gonna go ahead and score it. Um, let me grab my paper trimmer here real quick. We're gonna score it on both sides at two and an eighth. And that will go ahead and make it that standard size A2 card where it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So I am going in at two and an eighth. It's always good to double check because I had that two and a quarter there. So you want to add two and an eighth, rotate it 180 degrees and do two and an eighth again. Because when you add two and an eighth and two and eighth, that four and a quarter. So that gets you that measurement that you want. And so we're just gonna go ahead and fold these to the center and that is what's gonna create our gatefold card. And then I wanted to have a nice big border you'll notice around both of those panels. And so I actually cut those down. They are one and seven eighths inch wide by five and a quarter tall. So I put, um, I went, this is the petal pink and I went and used our very, very pretty eyelet 3D embossing folder for this one just to add some nice depth and some texture to the card. And since I knew I would want to use some embellishments, I decided to put this on the right hand side um, initially, I actually looked at putting it on the left-hand side, but you kind of just stop and think about how you envision your card coming together, and that will help you decide where um, is best to place the different pieces. So that is how I decided to put the um, embossed piece over here on the right. So I'm using liquid glue because this is embossed, and I find that the liquid glue kind of gets in those nooks and crannies of the embossing, so it has a better hold when you put it down on your card. Then for my um, straight paper, I'm just gonna use a tape runner because I don't have any little nooks and crannies that I need to make sure um, the glue will help and hold, it'll um, hold just fine. But you could, if you only have your liquid glue, you can just stick with your liquid glue. So now I've just done the two panels like that. Then I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna bring in some more of that basic white as well as some of our basic black. So I have here, I don't think I wrote down the measurements for these. Let's grab my ruler real quick so I can let you know. Um, so the one piece is two and a quarter by three and five eighths. And this one here, as I wanted to keep it consistent with the card and have that white background, but I also knew I wanted to use, I love using the deckled rectangle as well as the deckled circle, um, just because I love how it gives it a little bit of a different look. Um, and so then if I just gave a, just a tiny bit of that white, I didn't keep it the nice big thick border as I did with the card base because I just really wanted it just to pop a little bit. And so I made it just so that it just shows a little bit of that white. And then I have another piece here that I'm gonna stamp on. And that piece measures one and three quarters by three and an eighth. And I'm gonna go ahead and stamp on that. The stamp set I am using for this is the Heartfelt Hexagon. And I'm using the sentiment right here, I hope your day is filled with joy. I thought that the way it had the um, almost like typewritten font, but with the nice uh, cursive there, almost kind of italicized, that it just, it seemed like it would go really well with this simple, elegant looking card. 
And so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that in the black ink on this piece. And because I, I knew I was gonna add some ribbon to it, I am going to stamp it to the top portion of this piece rather than centering it. Okay, so I have my sentiment stamped on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue all those pieces together so that I can create the focal point of my card. So again, there's no um, little nooks and crannies because I haven't embossed any of these pieces. So I'm just using a tape runner and I'm going ahead and adding my black deckled die cut here. I'm going to add my sentiment here. So it's centered and I have a nice big chunk of that black on all of all sides there. And then I am going to do my ribbon before I go ahead and add it to my card. And I wanted to have a little bit, I like mixing the textures of adding the baker's twine with the ribbon just because it gives it the nice broad look as well as adding in some more delicate um, twine. And so I have three of those pieces together, all the same size, and I'm starting from the back and then I'm bringing it forward and tying it into a knot. So you could do a longer strand and do it into a bow if you wanted to, but I just wanted to do it in just a simple little knot so that it showcases the ribbon and the twine really nice. And so I'm just doing that. And I will tell you that it can be a little bit of a challenge when you've got multiple um, ribbons when you're tying them, they'll kind of move around. So you can just kind of futz with it a little bit, get it how you want it to be, and then go ahead and trim off the end. All right, so I've gone ahead and trimmed that up. I'm just gonna move these out of the way. So I wanted to have it have a little bit um, dimension. I'm raising it up, just putting some of the dimensionals here on the left-hand side, because obviously you don't want it on the right-hand side because then I'll keep the card closed. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're going ahead and adding those. And so I'm just gonna add three of them. And I have one that kind of, I go across the ribbon a little bit just to kind of help keep the ribbon in place so it doesn't slide around. Not that it really should, but it just kind of helps reinforce that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna center it from top to bottom and left to right, just kind of eyeballing it. And then I'm gonna finish by adding two of these flat um, pearls. I love these because I feel like it really picks up the pink in the petal pink really nice. and has that nice shine to it and it's flatter just as it says. So it mails really nice. It's not like a normal pearl where you're gonna have issues with it being too bumpy and so you don't have to worry about that. So I am just gonna go ahead and grab one of the large ones. Oops, I'm gonna stick it here up the top. Oops. And then I'm gonna grab one of the small ones. And there you have it. Simple, beautiful, elegant looking. And you would never guess that you grabbed that paper out of the Halloween collection, the Halloween spells. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, stay crafty.